Escaping the cave. And I'm getting really sick of guys named Todd. Godzilla x pod Godzilla x pod The thing that I talked about that triggered this whole thing, the post that I threw up on Facebook, uh, was a piece of disinformation. It was put out by somebody to reflect poorly upon Antifa. I was susceptible to this for a very specific reason. I've been paying a lot of attention at that point to the intellectual dark web people. But one of the criticisms of the IDW is that they are Trump adjacent. They're unfairly critical of the left while sort of positioning themselves as being these big independent thinkers, right? These non-party affiliate, not ideologically affiliated, just free thinkers, right? That was my main Twitter feed. Because a lot of the stuff they put up there is really, really good. You know, Quillette is still one of my favorite uh, websites. But most of their Twitter people, the IDW stars, these social media intellectual influencers, all of their material is on campus free speech. Politics is invading science. The transgender thing, transgender athletes, and also what some people would refer to as reverse racism or whites hating whites or the condemnation of whites by certain progressive factions, which is real. The problem is that I was basking in it. I was seeing it constantly. And I've noticed now, in retrospect, I didn't notice it at the time. I didn't even put two and two together. But I want you to consider this as I say it. My temperature was rising the whole time. I was feeding it. I was feeding the fever. More bacteria. <laughs> Almost every hour of every day. I had put Twitter on my phone. Oops. I had put Facebook on my phone. Double oops. Why did I do that? I took it all that shit off two years ago. Why did I put it back? Because it was easier to post the podcast. It was easier to market the podcast with the applications on my phone. So I put it on there, but I started jacking it. All the time. Oh my God, there's more, there's more. Grrr. Right? So I want you to think of all that stuff as fuel, kerosene, gasoline, jet fuel, however you want to look at it, just a little drop, maybe a little, like a cup here, cup here, cup here, cup here, and along comes this fucking spark. The final straw, where I started seeing all this stuff as like Hitler propaganda posters back in Germany in 1935, and it ignited. Boom. How difficult is that to do to people who are residing in echo chambers constantly and consistently, feeding on outrage, self-righteous outrage a lot of the time, but being outraged and being lathered up. And then something like this, some piece of disinformation just conveniently dropped in there to set you off. How often is that happening? How often do you think that's happening? And if you wanted to divide a population, what better way to do it? I mean, again, I said it at the, at the outset of this podcast, and it troubles me, that I was susceptible to this, despite being fucking aware of it, hyper aware of it. It nailed me. Because I let the fever grow. Because I kept ingesting the same shit all the time. Getting the fever to a point where it's ready. It's re the boil is ready to burst. And then poof, there it is. The detonator. How often is this happening? To how many people is this happening? On a regular basis. More importantly, in light of 2016 and looking forward to 2020, they've already said the intelligence community is certain that the Russians are trying to interfere with us again. From the outset, the, 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 the intent has not been to elect one candidate or another. That narrative seems to be new to me because up until recently, it was all about division. Now, they said that the, the goal of the Russian disinformation campaign on social media was to divide us. What better way to divide us? Raise the fever, pop the boil. I mean, do you, do you realize how much I hated Antifa? I, well, <laughs> let's just say my disdain for Antifa 
reached a boiling point. Now it's down to simmering. You see what I'm saying, though? You, do you understand where I'm coming from here? I would highly suggest you evaluate your information consumption to make sure that it's not just echo chamber chum designed to raise your fever a little bit and a little bit and a little bit to get you primed for the propagandist's visceral reaction. I thought I was pretty well inoculated this week. <clears throat> Apparently not. So, how have I reacted to this? I removed both of those applications from my phone. I have purged my Facebook feed. <laughs> Again, probably shouldn't have done that. But I did. And I've also gone in to Twitter and bleached who I was following. No more IDW folks. In fact, no more political people at all. It, I, I am on Twitter now to get baseball photographs. I like old-time baseball. Twitter's really good for that. I met a couple of people over there accidentally that I have enjoyed staying in touch with. So I'll keep it for that. But it, that, that is a podcast spreading mechanism by itself. I'm following like 40 people on there. How do people follow 15,000 fucking people? How the fuck do you even get to that point? <laughs> you got to be an app, right? Escapingthecave.com. Also on the ChristopherMedia.net network, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and at ETC Pod on Twitter. Twitter.